Hi, and welcome to the Cognitive AI release webinar for the first quarter of 2022. In this video, we will give you an overview and a live demo of the latest and greatest additions to your favorite conversational AI platform. Here are some of the highlights. We'll start with a look at some usability improvements. There's a new global search, improved navigation between products, and a lot more to discover. We'll also explore some new nodes and updated existing nodes in the flow editor. We've added a new hand over to agent node. We've included fuzzy search and pattern matching out of the box, and we allow more granular control of intent recognition in lookup nodes. Last not least, we'll introduce some newly added features for administrators and developers. There is much more to see in this webinar. Please also check out the release notes under docs.cognigy.com for the complete change log. If you have any questions or if you're up for a conversation with your fellow Cognigy AI users, please join our community under cognigy.com slash community. Should you not yet be a Cognigy AI user, but you still like what you see in this webinar, you can sign up for, for a free trial at any time. And with that, let's dive right in. Hi, my name is Matt from Cognigy, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the latest feature highlights from January, February and March 2022, and that covers version 4.16 through to 4.20 of Cognigy AI. As always, you can find all the information you need about our latest features on our website documentation, docs.cognigy.com, and just search for the release notes. Okay, let's jump straight in. And the first feature we're gonna be taking a look at is the new Salesforce native handover feature. You can find all the information you need on this feature in by searching for Salesforce uh, and clicking on the Salesforce integration page on our documentation. This will take you through the setup that's required to integrate Cognitive AI or an endpoint in Cognitive AI with the Salesforce live chat application if you are a Salesforce customer. You'll find the settings on the endpoint uh, under handover settings for most of our handover supported web uh, endpoints. And you'll be able to select Salesforce Service Cloud from the handover platform drop down. And then following that, fill in the details that are relevant to your particular Salesforce Service Cloud instance. Now, going hand in hand with our new Salesforce Service Cloud handover, we've added uh, or actually revamped our handover node in the flow. The flow itself, uh, the flow node itself doesn't change uh, drastically, but the interaction with the flow does. And if you are reviewing our new uh, feature within our lookup node, you'll notice we've added a option for handover status. By selecting handover status in the lookup and placing the lookup below your handover to agent node, you'll be able to route the flow based on the outcomes that were achieved of the handover. So the flow can be routed based on a completed handover, that is the handover being handed back to the virtual agent after the human agent has finished talking. You can also have a cancelled handover from a person trying to complete the handover but then deciding to cancel midway through the handover, or you can of course handle an error by this method as well. So all of these features are now possible with the handover to agent node. Of course our original handover node is still there, but to make benefit of the new features uh, in the handover status lookup, you'll need to use the handover to agent node in your flows. Now, similarly to uh, the handover status, we've added another option into our lookup nodes. If you've been following closely and you're an, an avid Cognigy AI user, you'll notice that when you set a lookup node to the intent type, you'll have a new option to select the intent level that the lookup is operating on. Now, this feature fits in with our intent hierarchy level that we introduced in earlier versions of Cognigy AI. And it means you'll now be able to select either a level one, level two, or level three intent from your case nodes within your flow. So this means that if I have selected a level two intent or a level two lookup uh, setting in the lookup node, my case nodes will be filled with a drop down containing all of my level two intents. And similarly, if I change that to a level one and save the node, my drop downs will, in my case drop downs will include only level one intents. So let me just change that back to a level two. And this of course reflects the hierarchy in the NLU model. As you can see, my level one intents are all 
sitting above the level two intents. So that's a really helpful feature for you to be able to structure your flows nice and organized, uh, depending on how you've set up your intent hierarchies in your NLU model. Now, another great feature that's been in hot demand by many of our customers is flow node search. And it is now available from the bottom left of the corner. You can hit the magnifying glass icon and you can search for a text string within your flow nodes. And as you'll see, once I type in handover, anywhere that the word or the text string that you search for appears in your flows is highlighted in yellow, or the node itself is highlighted in yellow. When you select on the node itself, the editing menu appears, and the element within the node settings that contains that text string is also highlighted. So you'll notice here that this quick reply actually contains handover inside the postback value. So it is to that granular level of, uh, of search within the flow. Of course, the case node here contains it within the uh, value of the case, also within the settings under the label. The handover to agent has options throughout the, uh, the editing fields. And then we have this say node here, which says you canceled the handover valid in the text field. So this makes it really fast to find text strings within your whole flow. Also includes code nodes, so you can find specific uh, lines of, uh, of code nodes that contain specific text. Really helpful feature uh, when you're editing in Teams, as you can find your teammates changes just by searching for the text that has been changed. The next features to highlight are two new flow nodes that we've added to our flows to be able to simplify the ability to extract particular words and context for those words. The first node that we've added is the pattern match node. This allows us to detect specific patterns and extract words from those patterns with specific meanings. In this example, we're going to be taking a destination and an origin city and in the context of finding a flight route that a user wants to take. The pattern is built by using a slot name with the at sign, followed by the greater than symbol to indicate a label for that particular uh, word within the sentence. So to test this out, let's type a few example sentences. Let's say I want to fly from London to Tokyo. And we can tell there that the origin is London, from London, and the destination is Tokyo, to Tokyo. Now let's flip that around and say I want uh, to fly, uh, let's say, to Tokyo, from London. And we have the same outcome, even though the sentence structure was different. Um, the that pattern match node has allowed us to find the particular contextual words within that sentence and allocate those labels to them. And just to double double check that we're not uh, faking this, you can see that there is uh, input.slots and input.slots used inside the input sentence. We can uh, flip this around so we can say, uh, I want to fly uh, to London from Tokyo and that will reverse the Tokyo as the origin and London as the destination. So that's the pattern match node. That's the first of two. The other node is called the fuzzy search node. Now what this node allows us to do is search a set of strings uh, or set of words from a string that determine a particular uh, match on a input text. So this could be finding spelling mistakes that are commonly made uh, against a list of words that you're wanting to extract from user sentences. There's obviously a lot of options you can use to change the way that you're fuzzy searching against these text strings. Uh, for example, increasing or turning on case sensitivity, uh, changing the minimum number of characters. There's also some options for uh, selecting thresholds. And of course you can select where to save the outcome of the fuzzy search. Now in this example, we've got a simple list of fruit, and if we test this out, let's firstly misspell apple, see what we get as an outcome here. So we get a 75% match on apple. Uh, let's try banana, or misspell banana, and again, similar result. Uh, let's see what this one pulls up. So again, you can see that some close results to the words in the list are found with a reasonably high score. 
And if there's something that is completely not found uh, or not close to any of the words in the list, you will receive uh, basically no results from that, uh, that node search. So that is the fuzzy search and also the pattern match nodes that have been added to our flows. Additionally, one small improvement over the editing uh, interface in the node editor is that you have a direct link to the extensions marketplace from your flows. You can select this button, it will take you right through to your extensions where you can add uh, your extensions from our marketplace directly into your uh, installed list of extensions for your particular virtual agent. Moving back to our NLU editing menu, we've added a couple of small changes here to be able to improve the experience of editing your NLU models. Firstly, when you're editing an intent, you can delete example sentences with just a single click by selecting this new trash bin icon on the right hand side of each example sentence. This will simply remove it from the model and you can faster edit your NLU models in this way. Additionally, if you're using default replies within your intents, you'll have a new option to train including your default replies as part of the NOU training model. This can be configured on a flow setting level or on a intent level. On an intent level, you can select this option to on, include default reply in NOU training. If that's included, you will be setting this default reply as one of your example sentences within your intent. And if you're using the default settings for the flow, you'll find an option to include default reply training in NLU as an on-off toggle within the settings for the flow. So a couple of helpful new features to improve the editing experience of your NLU models. Moving over to our endpoints menu now and taking a look at a new web chat endpoint setting that's available to help with certain languages where users are frequently sending messages that include the same input data. This uh, is available under the WebChat custom settings. Uh, you can now, in a recent version of Cognigy, introduced the ability to add custom settings for the WebChat widget um, that are not necessarily available by a default setting in the UI. The new feature we've added here is the enable input collation feature. This can be set to true or false and the timeout used for the setting. What this allows is basically when people are talking to the agent, they may be typing messages that are quite fast uh, and pressing enter directly after the message has been typed. So in this case, if I type hi, then there, and then my name is Matt, I sent all these messages as individual messages, but the uh, web chat widget has understood it as one input. It's collated that, all of those individual messages into a single input and sent it to the flow. So again, that setting can be turned on in the custom web chat settings by enabling in, enable input collation to true. And additionally, the timeout for that setting uh, can be set in milliseconds. In mid-2021, Cognigy introduced the packages feature which allowed users to extract particular resources from a flow on an individual level and export those and import them to another agent or even import them as duplicates to, a, uh, to the same agent. In a recent version of Cognigy AI, we've extended this feature's API capabilities to be able to offer more customized import of these features. This is available under API only at this point in time. And you'll notice in our API documentation, you'll find the options for replace content and replace structure. When importing a package, you'll be able to decide now on the merge strategy that you want to apply to that particular package. If you allow replace content to true, this means that only the content of the nodes will be updated with the content of the packages for nodes that existed in that package when it is imported. Similarly, replace structure being enabled to true allows just the structure of the flows to be adjusted while retaining the content that existed in the original package. Using these two features in tandem allows you to achieve customized approaches to package import. And of course, these can be applied on a localization basis to ensure that you have exactly the content that you want to apply, be that translations of flows 
or the underlying structures that are influencing your localizations to be imported through your packages feature. So a nice extension onto packages that allow that extra level of granularity when importing uh, flows and other resources with high complexity. Moving across to our documentation page to explain a fantastic new feature allowing the ability for users to contain email addresses or admin logins uh, across multiple organizations. This is a feature that uh, applies only to customers with dedicated or on-premise environments. The ability is now that users can be created with the same email address uh, that exists in multiple tenants. However, they can log in to a specific tenant via the login screen by applying the organization ID in the URL as a header when logging in. So that's a very helpful feature. Previously, a single email was only able to be used per, per user and additional email addresses had to be used uh, if using the same environment. Uh, and this feature now brings the ability to allow the same user uh, to log in across multiple tenants. And that's obviously making it very helpful uh, to fit in with organizations security requirements for uh, user identification. Jumping over to Cognigy Insights now to take a look at a few new features that have been added to our analytics package. First of all, in the Step Explorer, you'll notice that if you right click on any of the steps within the flow, you'll have a new option to open the node. Now, if that step is set up as a node, you'll be able to it directly move to the editing menu for that node within the flow. And this creates a seamless experience between the analytics that we're understanding what conversation paths users are taking to specifically edit the point in the flow where you see either a path that you want to change and affect how users are talking or how they are being uh, addressed by the bot to try and improve the overall experience uh, or it may be just to pick up on some slight changes that you want to improve uh, or test out as part of uh, maybe an a b test or, or some other form of testing so that's one small improvement we've made to the step explorer Additionally, in the Step Explorer, you'll find a new option to filter based on flow paths that contain a particular step. So for example, I could select this misunderstood step and now I would only be viewing flow paths that contained misunderstood at some point within that flow. Additionally, you'll find a new global filter for the message rating. Now, message rating is a recent recently uh, added feature within Cognigy AI to collect user ratings and apply them to the analytics. This global feature allows you to pick up on conversations that only occurred with a specific rating. So for example, if I wanted to only find conversations that had a negative rating, I can select that and that applies globally throughout the insights. So as I'm navigating through to say the transcript explorer, it automatically has negative applied and only these two conversations transcripts had a negative rating in them. Additionally, you will find uh, all of your conversation details within the uh, pop-out menu attached to a transcript, and you'll be able to see that the rating of the conversation was negative um, with the comment uh, that the user had applied from the conversation. Moving back to the Transcript Explorer itself, uh, you'll find a new uh, filter to be able to filter transcripts based on a particular flow that was involved with that conversation. So here I have the handover flow that was uh, applied. Maybe I want to apply the fuzzy search and pattern match flow. Of course, I didn't have any ratings within those flows, so I can take off my global filter. And there I will see all of the testing conversations where I was testing out the pattern match feature earlier on. Finally, We've improved the user experience between Cognigy Insights and Cognigy AI by adding the Cognigy AI button at the bottom of the user menu. By selecting that, it takes you back through to the dashboard of your virtual agent that you have selected. And that brings to an end our feature highlights update for the first quarter of 2022. Hope you enjoy these new features and as always, wish you all the best with developing virtual agents with Cognigy AI. Thanks for watching.